Hello everyone, Storm One One here. Today we'll be talking about mainly tropics. Today we have Tropical Storm Bill into parts of the Atlantic. We also got this area here to watch in the Western Gulf. And another disturbance has popped up in the main development region. Region. I also want to show you guys one of my new forecasting tools that I want to use for forecasting tropical systems as well. It's something that I've just made today and I think it's going to be a pretty good tool to use and I want to see your guys' opinion on that. So I was going to get started with the National Hurricane Center outlook here. Of course we got Tropical Storm Bill here. No threat to the United States thankfully. Has 60 mile per hour winds so with a central pressure of 998 millibars. It got pretty organized yesterday. It actually became a tropical depression yesterday and this morning I believe. Actually last night at 11 o'clock we got Tropical Storm Bill. Let's click on this system here. On tropical storm bill and looks like I may have a threat to parts of Canada here but nothing major or anything like that it'll be a, a subtropical system here uh, or post or yeah post tropical system here that'll be moving into parts of Canada but other than that no threat to the United States at this time here which is good news there and we're done with Bill talking about him we had disturbance number two. It's got a very low chance. Um, we'll take a look at two, a couple hurricane models. This is Invest 94L here. And it's got a very low chance. They just dropped the chances for the next five days here. And it was a 20%. They just dropped it to a 10% chance. This system will be heading into an environment that will be not be favorable for tropical development. There will be some dry air and there will also be some wind shear to work with. So this system may not really survive that well through that. But we'll see afterwards. Sometimes these systems could survive through dry air and wind shear. So we may still need to watch that system. But right now I'm not too worried about that system. But the system that everybody's watching is this one here in the southwestern gulf. It's got a 70% chance of development in the next five days. Expect that percentage to go up in the next few updates here. I can see this becoming a 100% chance very soon. It's got a low end 20% chance in the next 48 hours. I do not expect this system to develop in the next 48 hours. But in the next five days, I think that's definitely doable. I think this will likely become a tropical depression here in the next five days. So we'll go to tropical tippets here. Current storms, of course, we got tropical storm bill, and you can see here about the hurricane models uh, may affect parts of Canada here, and maybe later on down the road may affect parts of uh, Europe as well. And then we got 94L here, and definitely not organized, as you can see here. Not much convection around that center of low pressure. But you can see here with the tracks here, no threat to land currently. And here's the intensity guidance here. And the majority of models keep this uh, not really developing at all. Only four mod or three models put in tropical depression, but the a um, tropical storm. But the majority keep this. It's not really a tropical system. Nothing really to worry about. That system here as well. But let's go to Invest 92L. And I tell you what, with the hurricane models, these are not going to do a good job. Let me tell you that much. So we just updated to 18Z and it doesn't show it really going anywhere. Uh, might still be updating, I'm not sure. But if we go back to 12Z earlier today, you can see here earlier runs, it shows us going up into parts of Louisiana into Mississippi as for their landfall target. Meanwhile, everybody else is just staying in New in Mexico. Not really going to do much of anything. Highly doubt that. Uh, keep in mind that I highly doubt that. And whoops, I accidentally X that off. Let's go back there really quick. That's 92L. I did not mean to do that. Uh, I'll tell you what, they're not going to handle it too well. But let's look at the intensity guidance. And you can see here, half of the models have it in a tropical depression territory. Meanwhile, the other half just doesn't really show up developing too much. 
And when one model brings it out of the category two, but I have some doubts on that. This is going to be a pretty broad low pressure system, and it's going to have a hard time organizing. So let's take a look to the GFS ensembles. And you can see here the mean track here actually brings up into around the Lake Charles area, getting close to southeastern Texas here. Quite a, a western shift here. They actually had it going towards into southeastern Louisiana, but it seems like they pushed it a little further to the west. But most have been indicating that most of their impacts could be on the eastern side of the system. On the western side of the system, they might not be much of any rain to work with. On the western side, maybe some wind to work with, but the eastern side looks to be the side to watch here. So really, anybody south of this line here may need to watch for some impacts on this system here. And here's the uh, GFF and some of parallel models here. It doesn't show much of anything on there. But I tell you what, I will definitely watch areas right in here for any potential landfall in here over the next couple days here. I think the GFS is almost has a decent handle on this. Me on the hurricane models, not really so much on that but i think the malls are the hurricane malls are just a little bit confused about this cag the central america gyre we got going on because they're supposed to be the potential for another tropical system to develop nearby in the eastern pacific uh, later on on the other side of mexico so one may need to watch that system as well but uh, i believe the national hurricane center has got low probabilities on that we'll check that real quick at 60%. That's decent probability. We also got Tropical Depression Carlos. No threat to land on that system. And it's slowly dying out as well. But we'll watch both of those systems uh, closely here. But let's move on to the models here. So this is the European model. Again, we have the Central America uh, gyre going on here. And eventually, this system right here it might make landfall into mexico but it's going to turn up north and might go somewhere either here or maybe a little bit more this way i think it's really going to depend on with this upcoming trough that'll be moving in to parts of the northern united states which will have a cold front coming with it that can really determine how far north and west this thing can go and also you got that uh, Bermuda height going on out there out east as well. So let's get to Thursday here and what the European malls got here. So this is the zero Z run. It's going to update in a little bit on here. Next update actually in about an hour or so. But this is its older run here. And you can see here. If we move on to sustained winds here, it's a very broad low pressure system. The entire thing is pretty much like this here. And it's going to have a hard time getting organized here. If this is right here, you may have two different low pressure systems here. Kind of battling out and they might cancel each other out here. But I think this is just one solution here for the European model. It does show at least one of these here may gain some strength. So you got one here. And possibly another one here. And eventually, the stronger one will make landfall, possibly sometime later this week. It actually slows down here, uh, similar to Harvey here. It kind of slows down here, kind of goes down along the coast, eventually makes landfall here, eventually. But I'm not really buying too much into this right now. You can see how it just stays stationary, and eventually, it finally makes landfall by like Saturday or Sunday. You know what I'm talking about here, this next cold front be moving in here. That'll be pushing to the east here. Now it might be one of the driving factors for this tropical system here. It could go way up here, or maybe it could continue down this way. I'm not completely sure on that just yet. But the GFS model actually also keeps it a little further to the west as well. Models and early runs actually keep uh, actually kept it further east here. It actually brings in some big time impacts in these areas in there. And it seems like models are a little bit going back a little further to the west. I think it's really going to depend on 
if this cove right here, how fast it's going to move, because if it moves slower, it may go a little further north and west. If it moves a little faster, it'll go a little bit further to the east as well. So definitely something we need to watch there is that cofer, and that's going to definitely going to be one of those uh, steering mechanisms for that system there. And then it continues to move to the east into the Carolinas by early next week. And the European model is the sim a similar way here. And you can see here that cold front living in there. That might bring some severe weather again for parts of the Midwest, maybe into parts of the Green Great Lakes of the Ohio Valley. We may need to watch this system. model has been pretty consistent uh, with that system there. Let's look into the Canadian model. Let's see what it says on here. And you can see here again with that broad low pressure system. Looks like it may have it right there. And there's a big plum of moisture going on. Pretty pretty misplaced uh, with that low pressure system. I mean, just check out that area convection there. Just sticking around there. If that's correct, that might bring in some significant flooding into parts of the Florida Panhandle, which we'll take a look to those rainfall totals in a moment. But then again, still some uncertainties on the system here. I think there's a chance, I think the center of low pressure may, might make landfall somewhere in Louisiana, but we just do not really know where it's going to make landfall. We'll see what the models will trend towards as well. But I think it might make landfall somewhere in Louisiana and might continue up into parts of Mississippi and Alabama later on. But I still think either way, there's a decent chance this will become a tropical depression could be a weak one, but there also may be possible this might become a tropical storm as well if it can get organized very quickly. Which with model trends here, there's a lot of absurdities here. And there could be multiple low pressure systems that may have to fight with within the Central America gyre and misplaced convection. So a lot of stuff could happen with this system here. It may, the impacts might not be as bad, but I still think rainfall is still going to be a big concern here because whenever it moves up north, it's still got a lot of moisture with it, plenty of it. Maybe not much in a way with winds, but rainfall, yeah, definitely for sure. So let's check out the European model. This is its newest run, and it's a, in this recent run, it brings it pretty far to the west here. I mean, check out all this rainfall, anywhere from 4 to 7 inches of rain. Quite a bit of rain to work with here. Even moves up into parts of North Alabama, North Georgia, and eventually moves up into the Carolinas later on. GFS model, uh, a little further south with this rainfall here, but it still shows a lot of rain. Really anywhere from 4 to maybe 9 inches of rain in some places. See, we got some isolated spots of 11 inches in parts of summer Alabama. And this is going to be an overkill. And I don't think this is going to happen. And here is the Canadian model. Almost 30 inches of rain in parts of Florida. Do I think this is going to happen? No. But is it a factor? Maybe. Might be. Because there might be a chance this system might stay a little bit stationary here. It might move a little bit slow here. And it might move slow enough to get some of these significant rainfall totals. So we we'll still need to watch for that. Here's the Weather Predict Center of things about this system. And you can see here, it does have some places close, closing in on 10 inches of rain. And this is the next seven days here. Keep in mind of that. So anywhere from looks to be 5 to 10 inches of rain for places like in southeastern Louisiana, southern Mississippi, southern Alabama, into parts of the far western panhandle of Florida as well. And here's my probabilities for this tropical system. I think there's a pretty good chance this is going to become a tropical depression. But I think there's still going to be uncertainties uh, for this thing to become, excuse me, a tropical storm over the next several days here. Now let's going to get to my new forecasting tool, whatever you guys want to say about this. So I call this the tropical system impact 
forecast and this is going to be in levels so it's from a level one to five here so let's go over what each level it's got here and also made a little forecast for the system here as well using this forecast as well so start off with a level one minor impacts so this is anywhere from one to four inches of rain Tribe with a pressure winds of 25 to 35 miles per hour and also a 2% chance of tornadoes in SPC standards. In SPC standards, that's a 2% chance of a tornado in a 25 mile radius of, even, of any given point. That's what that means there. So basically, you'll probably get some beneficial rain out of the system here. You'll get some decent winds out of it and you also got an isotort after it. That's kind of what it means there. And minor impacts, it's not really too big of a deal. Then on level two, this is where things start to get a little bit noticeable. Four to eight inches of rain. Tropical storm winds of 36 to 73 miles per hour. And a 5% chance of tornadoes in SPC standards. So that's when things start to get a little bit noticeable. You start to get quite a bit of rain. You also can get some pretty strong winds out of this that could create some tree damage. And also you can see a few tornadoes. So it is a little bit noticeable impact from this system here. From a tropical system if it does produce those factors. And then you can move on to level 3. This is when you start to get some of those major impacts. 8 to 14 inches of rain. That's a lot of rain. That could bring in some major impacts. Category 1 and Category 2 winds. It can either be a Category 1 hurricane or a Category 2 hurricane. And those are winds of 74 to 110 miles per hour. And also that 10% chance of tornadoes. Now, this is where they issue significant probabilities at this point. It doesn't really matter. It can be significant or it cannot be significant. What significant probabilities means... It doesn't matter if it's a chance for tornadoes or a chance for strong tornadoes. It doesn't really affect it with the strong tornado probability. It's still a 10% chance of tornadoes either way. So the significant probabilities doesn't really matter into this category here. And that's the same way for level 4 and 5. So level 4, intense impacts. 14 to 20 inches of rain. That's a lot of rain when you think about that. Category 3 winds of 111 to 129 miles an hour. And also 15% chance of tornadoes. And then you move on to level 5, catastrophic impacts. This is where you start to get some major damage to homes and businesses here. With the winds and also for the rain as well. When you get at least 20 inches of rain, that can bring in some catastrophic impacts and can produce a lot of damage with that flooding with at least 20 inches of rain. Plus, you also got the 30% chance of tornadoes. That's a pretty high probability for tornadoes, which I think that's happened once. That's a high risk in SPC standards. I think there was a high risk for tornadoes uh, for an SPC for one tropical system. I cannot remember when that was, but I'm sure, it ha I believe it happened once before. So that puts it into the level 5 category here. But also keep in mind, guys, you do not need all three of them. It could be one of these uh, things here. Like for level 2, for example, you may get 48 inches of rain, but you may not get tropical storm winds. You may just get tropical depression winds, but you can get 48 inches of rain. Still fits in the level 2 category. So just to keep in mind that, and this goes in for every single one, every single category here. You just need one of these here to get to that level of that category there. So let's put in this forecast into this upcoming tropical system, which is NVES-92L. Now keep in mind, this forecast only goes out five days. Five days at max. So just to keep in mind that. So it, at, at max, this is at a level two. And this is mainly for tropical depression potentially. Potentially tropical storm winds. And it's really mainly the rainfall as well. So level 2 out of 5 isn't too bad. But it's definitely some noticeable impacts that can really affect your commute and stuff like that. And these are areas I could see 4 to 8 inches of rain. And then the level 1 minor impacts which includes places like Lake Charles, 
uh, Jackson, Mississippi, and even Panama City Beach as well, and even for Destin Ford as well. And then for places in level two would be like New Orleans, Baton Rouge, Mobile, Pensacola, Gulfport, and Lafayette as well. Within that level two as well. And keep in mind, expect this this forecast, these forecast zones to expand over time. I mean, this is for the next five days. Tomorrow, it will get larger about every day here. I'm still questioning myself if I should put in a level three. Mainly for the rainfall, not for the wind or the tornado threat, but for the rain here. Because there is a chance some people might be able to exceed eight inches of rain. Like you see in some of these models here, show isolated spots, eight plus inches of rain. But right now, I'm going to keep it at max a level two for this upcoming tropical system. So that's kind of really it there. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section down below here. Of what you guys think about this forecast. Now keep in mind, the reason why I really made this forecast is because most people really just focus on the intensity, like the category hurricanes. Like for example here, you might get effects of a category one hurricane may hit, hit Florida. It's like, well, then it's not really bad at all. Well, you may end up with 12 inches of rain. That's a little bit of a different story there. And when you get 12 inches of rain, that's in the level three. That's in the major impacts category. Now, the one thing I'm missing in here is the storm surge. And most of these, all these here are more of inland type of effects. And for storm surge, that's kind of on the coast. Let me know if you guys want me to add in the storm surge. If you got in the comment section down below here. And I'll add it if you guys want storm surge to be added in here. And that's kind of the reason why I've put this up here with this level, uh, with this forecast tool here. And I think this here would be very useful in the future here. And for example here, uh, let's talk about Hurricane Harvey and put this in the forecast perspective. Wherever there was a Hurricane Harvey that badly affected parts of Texas and Louisiana, it was only a category three hurricane at max. That puts in the level four category. But you also got at least 20 inches of rain. That's catastrophic impacts as well. Another example here is is last year. Uh, I cannot remember the name of this tropical system, but it affect it made landfall somewhere in Mobile or Pensacola. Or maybe a little further west than that. So you guys probably know that. I believe it was at max of a category one or two hurricane. It was at a level three uh, for the impact thing. But people got 14 to 20 inches of rain. Maybe a little higher than that. That's a level four. That's intense impacts. And that can create some significant problems if you get that much rain. So that's kind of examples here. So this is a way that people don't really get caught off guard. And then I think this will be a really good forecast tool as well. And I might change the inches of rain numbers a little bit as well in the future. We will see about that. But anyways, guys, this RV guest today. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys like this video, hit that like button. If you really like my channel, hit that subscribe button. Hit the bell not notification so you never miss an upload. If you guys have questions about this, leave it in the comment section down below. I'll answer you guys' questions, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.